For more, we're now joined by the host of News Nations on Balance, Leland Bittert. Uh, Leland, it's good to have you again. Israel now taking fire from Gaza, from Lebanon, from Syria. Is it safe to say that Hezbollah is involved, you know, at, at this point in the fighting? Well, Hezbollah definitely could be involved in the fighting. And I think we have to look at this as Iran moving its chess pieces around. And they've spent years, the Iranians and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, preparing for these moments, right, so that they can be able to have Hezbollah in the north uh, and, to a certain extent, the Syrians uh, launch enough rockets uh, into Israel that it forces the IDF to be prepared for a two-front war. Fighting a two-front war and being prepared for one uh, sometimes requires almost the same amount of manpower. Um, so this definitely uh, stretches Israel's resources in terms of what they can throw at Hamas. Hezbollah, 150,000 rockets, far more sophisticated rockets than Hamas has uh, that can target Israeli critical infrastructure, could take out the airport, gas terminals, uh, the high-rises in Tel Aviv and the like. Uh, that is Iran's insurance policy against a uh, decapitation strike for their regime or against an Israeli first strike on their nuclear facilities. Once Iran plays that card and actually has a, a Hezbollah launch a real war against Israel, they've played that card. Um, and that's not something that the Ayatollah appears to want to do yet. Could that change? Absolutely. Um, but but Israel would then be truly in a fight for its life, an existential fight. Um, and remember, Israel is still the only power uh, in the Middle East that has nuclear weapons. Iran knows that and Hezbollah knows that. Yeah, and we're seeing these aerial images play out beside you. It's hard to even imagine it, it getting worse than it already is. Leland, how concerned should we be about this war becoming an even wider regional fight, more so than what we are already seeing, what, what you just spoke to. I was reading the Jerusalem Post this morning that there are also threats coming in from Iranian-backed groups in Iraq and Yemen uh, as well. What does the future hold here in terms of it becoming wider, possibly? We are in a very dangerous time. Um, and you have to think that probably the best case scenario, if you could imagine saying that, is that this remains a Hamas versus Israel conflict. Um, so certainly the, the scenarios you lay out could be could happen. Um, there, there's a lot of work being done, and I think it's why you see the USS Gerald Ford already off the coast of Israel. It's why you see talk by the United States of sending another carrier battle group. Um, you know, President Biden kept saying, you know, to those enemies of Israel who would who would exploit this time, don't, don't, last, yesterday. Was that enough? Um, no, probably. It was very different than perhaps what Pro President Trump tweeted a couple of years ago. Um, when he said that uh, he will hold the, the Ayatollah and the leadership in Iran personally responsible um, if something happened uh, to the U.S. Embassy in, in Egypt. Those are the types of words, uh, U.S. Embassy in Iraq, pardon me, those are the type of words and statements that the Iranians realize. That's the language of the Middle East. Uh, but I, I, I don't think we're there yet. And I think the, the real focus needs to be here um, on where Israel's focus is, which is on Gaza, and on the fact that, that Hamas appears to have gravely miscalculated, they thought Israel would be paralyzed uh, with with hostage taking with 100 plus hostages, uh, and it appears as though they were they were sorely miscal miscalculating uh, that Israel has been awakened, uh, angered, uh, and undeterred. Yeah, I know we had one expert on earlier this week who said. Iran is is afraid of Trump, you know, more so than this current administration. Sure. And President Biden, we all watched him come forward yesterday. Uh, he said there are moments in this world when pure, unadulterated evil is just unleashed. Um, and so he condemned the violence. He mentioned that, you know, we stand in solidarity with Israel. The Department mm -hmm. of Defense has announced it's flowing in military supplies, Iron Dome interceptors, aircraft carriers, military ships, you name it. But what more can the United States do? And at any point, do we see American boots on the ground there? I know Jake Sullivan said at this time, no, but does that change? It seems unlikely. Uh, and the Israelis don't really need American boots. You know, is it in an all out war with Lebanon and Iran and on and on? Does, does U.S. firepower help? Sure. Uh, but what what Israel needs is U.S. support. And it was interesting that there was a comment uh, by by a couple of journalists that there, there's never been a more pro-Israel speech than President Biden's uh, speech uh, yesterday. Hogwash. 
Um, the, the fact that he had to make that speech and the fact that he says, I unequivocally stand with Israel as news, tells you that there was a question whether he would stand with Israel. Uh, there's been past American administrations that that wasn't a question. You said, what more could he do? Uh, he could tell the Qataris to hand over the leader of Hamas within 48 hours, or he was going to start freezing Qatari bank accounts because the Qataris give the leader of Hamas a villa inside uh, Qatar uh, to, to work and to live and to bank from and to run his operations from. Uh, you could announce an, a, a blockade of Iran until U.S. Uh, hostages are released from Gaza. Uh, you could refreeze, at the very least, the $6 billion uh, that we just yeah. gave to Iran. You could say that you're going to hold the Iranian regime personally responsible uh, for the lives of American hostages inside Gaza. There's a whole litany of things. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.